Alright, this is example number two of chapter 14. We have this car or automobile which is 3,500 pounds and travels down an inclined uh, road with an in initial speed of 20 meters over second. The driver jumps on the brakes causing the wheels to lock. When the wheels lock, the car starts to slide. And if the friction of coefficient of between the wheels, when the wheels are locked and the surface is 0 0.5, they ask us to find how far the tires skid the road. So how far, so if this is the initial position, right? So how far did the car go after it brake? The solution. We are being asked to find a distance, having velocity and forces. So we will apply the principle of work and energy. But to do so, we need to find all the forces. So if we do our free body diagram of our, our little car. So I'm going to do it in an inclined system. So I will choose to have a coordinate system X and Y incline 10 degrees, right? So what forces do we have? We have our weight, 10 degrees. We have our weight, and the weight will be 3,500 pounds. Then we have the normal, which could be anywhere in my car. And since my car is going in this direction, right, the velocity, so I have a force acting in that direction that is the friction force, right? I'm going to write here where I'm going to apply, apply the principle of work and energy. But we have to see which of the forces that are being applied to my car will do work and which, win, which one will I uh, put as energy, uh, the kinetic energy or potential energy. So the forces acting on the car are the weight that I will put as, as a potential energy and I will lose potential energy while I'm going down, right? And then I have the normal. Does the normal do any work? It does not uh, because it's perpendicular to the motion. So there is no motion in the perpendicular direction, so the normal do not produce any work. But the, the friction force does because the friction force opposes to the motion and this is in the same direction to the motion. So the friction is a uh, non-conservative force and is, uh, we have to calculate the work done by the friction force. But since the friction force is related to the normal, I'm going to add forces in the y direction, add forces in the y direction and uh, this being this my y and being this my x, right? And the y direction, what do I have in the y direction? N minus weight cosine of 10 degrees. And this, since I don't have any motion in that direction, that this equation of motion convert actually in an equation of equilibrium. So my normal is equals to the weight times cosine of 10 degrees. And that's, I, I can calculate that, is equals to 3,500 times cosine of 10 degrees. So, and the normal is equals to, I have that right here, 3,446 times 8 pounds. I know that my friction force is equals to mu, which is 0 0.5 kinetic coefficient times the normal. So it will be half of that. So that means that the, it will be 1,723 times uh, 0.4 pounds. Since um, the normal doesn't change along the path of the car that goes from 0 to 1s that I'm looking for, it, this force will be constant. So actually we could ha treat that as a constant force and therefore a conservative force. But since it's friction, it, the concept is that this uh, force is a non-conservative force. So we will treat it as a non-conservative force and we will apply the formula of work to calculate how much work does that force do. So what is the principle of uh, work and energy? We know that is force done by non-conservative forces equals to the total energy in the second position minus the total energy in the first position. So the energy 
that was lost from the first position to the second position. So that will be kinetic energy plus potential energy minus kinetic energy plus potential energy. So let's calculate one of uh, each of those terms one by one. So the non-conservative forces is only the force done by that friction force, which is then the integral from zero to that S. I'm sorry, from zero, and I'm ending in S of that force, which is force. If I write the definition of work, it will be a dot product between S and, oh, let me write that as a vector, and then as, because I wrote the dot product, and then that will be uh, equals to, since they are both in the same direction, because the motion is right in x direction, and this is always in the same direction, this dot product, which will involve a cosine, but angle of the between those two forces is zero, I can write that this is F, the integral, F dS. And since it is a constant, which is 723.4, that will be negative 1723.4 S minus S0, but S0 is 0. So the work is 1723.4. So that's the work done by the uh, non-conservative forces of friction. Then we have the kinetic energy. Let's do the kinetic energy of the position, the first position. We know that the velocity, the initial velocity is 20, so we have one half of the mass velocity one square. The mass. Remember that in tissue units or American units, the pounds is a primary unit and the mass is a derived unit. So we have to divide 3,500 or divided by the gravity times the velocity square. I have already calculated that value. It's 21,739.30. So, and then we have the value of V1 is the weight. If we put our reference frame right here, so that uh, in the first position, then we got in the second position, we are right here. So this will be the height that we went down, so our reference frame is in the position one, our potential energy for the weight in position one will be zero. So that loss of potential energy we will take into consideration in, in the second potential energy. So then we have the kinetic uh, energy two, it will be one half mv two square, and since we want to find that distance when the uh, car actually stops, then this is zero because we don't have velocity in the second position. And then finally, V2 for the weight, we already said that we lost potential energy and that will be negative mgh, right? So it will be the weight times the height, which is s, and but it's not in that direction but in this, so we have to multiply by sine of 10, s sine of 10 degrees. Uh, finally, we can plug that all into our equation, and then we have the work done is negative 1723.4 S is equals to 0, negative 3500 sine of 10, let me put that into parentheses, minus T1 plus V1, which is zero. So, and we, if we do that, we have two values of S right here. So we solve for S, we have S right here, and we have S right here. So we solve for S, and solving for S, we have S is equal to 19.58. So this is solving the problem using the uh, principle of work and energy. There is different ways to solve this problem, but this is the approach where we are practicing in chapter 14. 
we, if we want to see another approach, and I will call this method one, apply the principle of work and energy, let me call this method two, which is a method that we already studied before in chapter 13, is applying equations of motion and integrate. Acceleration. So what do we do? So let me let me put method two in think. So well what we do is add forces in X. This will be equals M A X. And then we have what forces do we have in X? We have force friction force and a minus weight sine of ten degrees equals to mass times AX. That will be equals to then the force we already calculated is one seven twenty three point four minus a uh, the weight the weight will be thirty five hundred times sine of ten equals to mass thirty five hundred over thirty two point two AX. From here, I can find AX, so here everything is known by AX, and AX is equal to, so, so solving for AX gives me an acceleration of negative 10.3 feet over second squared. So what I'm doing is deaccelerating, de so that's why the negative sign, and having the acceleration, and if we uh, consider the acceleration to be constant with constant acceleration, we can write that S is equal to S0 plus V0T plus A in X, right, right, T squared over I, I don't have time, so I, this is one equation, and the other equation that I have that you remember is velocity squared minus uh, equals to velocity zero squared plus two a x s minus s zero, and s zero is zero, and then velocity zero is twenty, right? And the final velocity this is zero, so I solve for s, solve for s not using that one, so using this equation. So in this equation, I have AX, I have velocity, initial velocity AX, and solve for this S, and it gives me exactly the same solution, 19.5 feet. Okay, so my point in this problem was that you can use what we learned, this is chapter 12, and this is chapter 13, using uh, equation of motion, or you can use uh, the principle of work and energy. So it will never be only one way to solve the problem, but it, you can use different approaches to solve the same problem.